Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like most of us, they enjoy good times. The Adventures of the Nelson Family. about all I can dig up. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks a lot, Dave. Will these be enough? Oh, sure, more than enough. Uh, some of these are just sound effects, you know, railroad trains and stuff like that. It's kind of a mixed up group. Well, that's all right. So are some of the people I've invited. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Uh, I'm sorry I can't make it. So am I. Are you sure you can't stop by for just a little while? No, uh, thanks. I I'd love to, but I have to study. On Friday night? Yeah, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I have an exam on Monday and I have to work tomorrow. Tomorrow? I didn't know law offices stayed open on Saturday. Well, we don't usually, but we're working tomorrow morning. We're kind of busy over there. When are you going to try your first case? <laughs> Not for a while yet. There's a small matter of graduating from law school first and then passing the bar exam. Well, that should be easy for you. What do you do at the office? Uh, you mean personally? Yeah. Oh, I... It kind of varies from day to day. Well, don't be so modest, David. Tell her about some of the interesting cases you've been investigating. Investigating? Well, isn't that dangerous? Well, you don't know the half of it. There was this one case. No, I better not tell you. I don't want you to get worried about it. Thanks a lot. I never realized your job was so exciting. I wish you'd tell me about it. No, don't listen to him. There's really not much to tell. Most of it's just routine. Well, what David means is it's unethical for an attorney to discuss a case. Uh, especially since I'm not an attorney yet. Well, then you can tell me. Well, if I come across something really interesting and exciting, I'll tell you about it. Naturally, all names will be changed to protect the innocent. Naturally. <laughs> well, don't forget now, Dave. That's a promise. Okay. And thanks a lot for the records. I'll get them back to you in a couple of days. That's okay. No rush. Bye. 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 Well, thanks a lot. What are you talking about? You know darn well what I'm talking about. Put me on a spot like that, telling her I was doing a lot of dangerous investigating. I was just trying to build you up. Give you a little glamour, make you more interesting. Well, well, that's very thoughtful of you, but I just soon struggle along by myself. Well, why struggle? With a little friendly assistance on my part, I can make you practically irresistible. Uh, worry about your own irresistibility. Well, all I did was mention a few of the big cases you've been working on. Uh, what big cases are those, Dave? Oh, it's nothing, Pop. Ricky's just trying to be funny. Well, don't be so modest, David. Don't tell me some of those assignments of yours aren't dangerous. David, have they been giving you dangerous assignments? Well, now look what you've done. You made me interesting to my own mother. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know you were doing any work of that sort. Well, neither did I, and I don't think I like the idea. You're getting worried about nothing, Mom. The most exciting thing I do over there is run out and get coffee and put stamps on letters and show Mr. Dobson what's wrong with his backswing. And there's nothing dangerous about the job? Well, not so far. Uh, last week I caught my tie in the mimeograph machine. <laughs> well, uh, don't you get to work on any law cases at all? Oh, oh, once in a while they send me over to the library to look up something. Well, uh, what kind of cases does Mr. Dobson handle mostly? Oh, all sorts of things. He handles a lot of accident cases for insurance companies. You'd be surprised at how many people try to fake accidents just to collect the insurance. Oh, yeah, I, I imagine so. Well, uh, how do you think you're doing over there, or, or is it too soon to tell? Oh, I think I'm doing okay. In fact, yesterday something really encouraging happened. The boss remembered my name. Oh. <laughs> Morning, Dobson and Kelly. Oh, yes, Mr. Westbrook. Mr. Kelly isn't in yet, but I'm expecting him any minute. Shall I have him call you? Yes, sir. As soon as he comes in. Hi, Dave. Morning, Charlie. Am I late? No. You're right on time. Boss got in a little while ago. Like it? Yeah. Anything going on? Anything I should know about? Nothing exciting. Mr. Dobson's been working on that accident case. I guess they're going to settle it Monday. Well, if any important calls come in, they won't be for me. Kiss me. Huh? Name of the nail polish. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah. Morning, David. Good morning, Miss Edwards. Take it easy with that arm now. Oh, I will. It still bothers me a little, but the doctor said it'll be okay in a few days. Good. 
could take the sling off, but it's a little more comfortable this way. I'll be in touch with you. Good, I'll wait to hear from you. How bad that arm really is. He could be bluffing. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, David, would you come in my office, please? I need your help. Yes, sir. Take it easy, David. You'll last longer. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and David. Uh, yes, ma'am. Would you please stop saying yes, ma'am, to me? I'm really not that old. <laughs> yes, Miss Edwards. Close the door, please. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Dobson. Unless it's something important, I'll be in conference for about a half hour. Yes, sir. Now then, Dave. I've got a very important match coming up tomorrow. And I've been having trouble with my putting. Maybe you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll try. Hey, where you been? You're late. I got stuck in a caucus with the boss. Please, I'm your brother, not your girlfriend. Hey, what time are you going to stop by and pick me up tonight? Oh, about seven, okay? That's fine. I'll be ready. Hey, I thought I recognized that guy. He was in the office today and he had his arm in a sling. Seems to be all right now. Come on, let's get out of here. What for? I want him to see me. What's going on, anyway? That's what I'd like to know. He's probably faking the injury so he can collect more damages. It kind of looks that way, doesn't it? Better fool Mr. Dobson. Hope he's still at the office. Do you have a dime? No. May I change for a quarter, please? Sure. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. Is anything wrong? Yeah, that guy over there on Alley 3 is bowling. Oh, really? <laughs> Hey, David, keep an eye on him, will you, while I pull Mr. Dobson? Well, what am I supposed to do if he starts to leave? Trip him or steal his bowling ball? I don't care. Just keep an eye on him. Edwards, this is Dave. Dave Nelson. Oh, Dave. Are you still at the office? No, I'm here at the bowling alley. Do you know where Mr. Dobson is? Well, no, I don't if he's not at the office. Is something the matter? Uh, there sure is. You know that accident case he's been working on for the insurance company? Yes. Well, the man's down here bowling. There's nothing wrong with his arm at all. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Well, what do you think I ought to do? Well, gee, I don't know. Maybe you could take a picture of him. Uh, a picture? Would that kind of evidence be admissible in court? Oh, I don't know. You're the one who's studying to be a lawyer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it would. At least it's worth a try. Can you get a camera? Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, yeah, I think so. Oh, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> a perfect way to bowl. Where's your camera? It's at home. You gotta go home and get it. What for? Well, I couldn't get a hold of Mr. Dobson, so I phoned his secretary and she told me to get a picture of the guy. Well, you go home and get it. I can't. I gotta watch him. Gee, I, I hate to leave when I'm bowling so great. Watch this. Man, that's great. Gee, it worked before. Go on, hurry up. Hey! 
in a hurry, Mom. I'll see you later. Hey, have you seen my brother? Uh, the guy I was born with? Oh, you mean the sneaky one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was around here a little while ago. Well, the guy that was born on Alley 3, uh, did he leave? Yes, just a few minutes ago. Well, uh, the sneaky guy, uh, I mean my brother, uh, did he follow him? Yes, he had it. Hey, Rick, is that you? Yeah. What are you doing in there? I couldn't get out. The darn thing left for me outside. It was the only place I could go. The guy was coming by and I didn't want him to see me. Where is he? He's gone. Oh, great. Excuse me. Hey, isn't that the girl that was bowling with him? Yeah. Well, don't you remember? He told her he'd pick her up at 7. All we have to do is follow her and we'll get him. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, come on, let's go. We'll let you know how it comes out. Yeah. Good, good. Hey, how many times have you seen something like this and said... I wish I had a movie of that. How many times have you been traveling and said, boy, I wish I had a movie camera. How often have you seen your family having fun and said, I wish I could afford a movie camera. Well, now you don't have to wish any longer. Now Kodak announces a brand new brownie movie camera that costs only $24.50 or as little as $2.50 down. The new low-priced brownie 8 camera is so easy to use. One simple setting and you get big, full-color movies of all the fun, action, and excitement of everything you do. Look at that spray. Why not start right now and put your own family in movies? A Brownie 8 movie camera costs only $24.50, or as little as $2.50 down. And it's made by Kodak, so you know it's good. <laughs> I've been driving a cab for 20 years. I've seen all those detective pictures, all them private eye television shows, but this is the first time anybody's ever said that to me. Follow that car. Well, hurry up, will you please? We'll lose her. Wait till I tell my wife about this. <laughs> That was five dollars. Put it on your expense account. Thanks a lot. I'm sure your mother would like this. Oh, uh, that's very nice, but do you have anything a little more... Uh, I mean, not quite so... I think I know what you mean. I'm glad she does, because I sure don't. Get ready to leave. There she goes. I think I have something here you might like. Oh, uh, thanks. I've changed my mind. Can you still see her? Yeah, she's standing back there talking to that salesman. I hope she sticks around for a while. This is really comfortable. Hey, this is great. There she goes. Come on. Uh, this is so relaxing. Pick me up in a little while, will you? Come on, Rick. Great, now we've lost her. <laughs> and she went to the hosiery counter and bought some stockings. 
We almost got you some perfume, huh? Well, why didn't you? Well, she left in a hurry, and we had to take off after. She went into the furniture department, and that's where we lost her. I guess it was my fault. I started to vibrate and kind of lost interest. <laughs> What's this? He sat down in one of those vibrating chairs. Oh. Well, to get back to the man, did you notice anything unusual about him? Uh, he wasn't a very good bowler. He smoked cigars and he needed a haircut. Well, now, wait a second. You said they had a date tonight, didn't you, he and the girl? Uh, that's right. He said he'd pick her up about seven. Well, then don't you think there's a good possibility he may get a haircut this afternoon? Yeah, that's an idea, Mom. Well, he can't look in every barber shop in town. Well, why not? It's worth a try. Who knows? We might get lucky. I don't know. How long do you think that would take us, Mom? Well, it all depends. On what? On whether you stop to look through all the barbershop magazines. <laughs> yeah, that's a thought. Some of those magazines are pretty good. And you can forget it. Come on and don't forget your camera. Thanks a lot for the idea, Mom. Well, that David's a born top sergeant. <laughs> Killjoy. Let him go to Las Vegas. Come on, let's go. How many more barber shops on the list? Just two, and that's one of them. Hey, isn't that the guy? Yeah, that's the guy, all right. Boy, this sure is a lucky break. Now the question is, how do we get a picture of him using his bad arm? Yeah, that might not be so easy. And maybe we can get a picture of him combing his hair. Look. No, that's no good. You can't see his face. We wouldn't be able to identify him. I wish he'd turn around. Hey, fellas. Yeah? One of you guys help me with this? Oh, yeah, sure. Go on, Ricky, give him a hand. Thanks a lot, Mac. Oh, that's all right. I better get Dolly for this. Hey, I just got an idea. When a guy comes out of the barber shop, ask him to give you a hand with his crate and I'll take his picture. Yeah, that sounds great. Where are you going to take it from? Uh, right from behind his car. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, yes? Do you mind giving me a hand with this crate? What do you want to do with it? Well, I want to put it up there on the truck. Oh, sure. Oh, uh, why don't you grab this end? It might be a little lighter. Okay. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. It's okay. Did you get the picture? Yeah, it was perfect. Of course, you didn't have to turn your face toward the camera. Can I help it if I'm a ham? Come on, let's take the film over to Wally's and develop it. There's no doubt about it, Dave. This is pretty damaging evidence. You don't know the half of it, Pop. My back is killing me. Oh, this is a good picture of you, Ricky. Oh, really? It's my bad side, too. <laughs> what are you going to do with these, Dave? Oh, I thought maybe I should take them right over to Mr. Dobson's house. Hey, you ought to give you a raise for this. I don't want a raise. I just want to get promoted from putting stamps on envelopes. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid so. May I speak to you for a minute in private? Well, of course. 
Why don't we go into the den? We've got guests for dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not interrupting you. No, not at all. Now, sit down, sit down. Tell me what's on your mind. Well, I think I may have some important evidence on a case you've been working on. Really? Which one's that? Uh, the accident case. You know, the one where the fellow hurt his arm? Oh, what have you got? Well, I've got some pictures here that I took. Hey. Let me get a better look at these. See there, he's starting to lift a crate. Mm -hmm. And in this one, he's actually hoisting it right up on the back of the truck. This is terrific, Dave. Oh, thank you very much, sir. And who's this young fellow? Oh, that's my brother, Rick. Uh, that's a good picture of him. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And that's his bad side, too. <laughs> oh, by the way, he said he'd be glad to appear as a witness. Wonderful. Well, you don't know what this means to me. Oh, I'm glad to help. You sure did. This is exactly what I needed. Now, look, could you wait here a minute, please? Sure. Excuse me. George! George, could you come here a minute, please? David, I want you to meet somebody. Well, this is... Uh, this is Mr. Gibson. This is David Nelson. He works in my office. Hello, David. Hey, you, sir. Uh, you're interested in photography, aren't you, George? Sure. Who is... It? Well, uh, David here, among his many talents, is an excellent photographer. I want you to take a look at a couple of pictures he took this afternoon. Fine. Uh, I'd like to see them. Well, I, uh... I guess I won't need this anymore. I hate to spy on you, Mr. Gibson, but I felt it was part of my job. Oh, now, don't apologize, Dave. You probably saved me $10. $10? Yes. This faker is an old golfing companion of mine. You know, he sprained his wrist about a month ago, and he's trying to get me to believe it's still bothering him. Insisted I give him a four-stroke handicap. <laughs> I know I wouldn't have gone through with it. Uh, I'm not so sure. You've been getting a lot of sympathy with that sling. Well, it was worth a try. Gee, Mr. Dobson, I'm sorry I got this mixed up. Are you kidding? Well, you did a great job, Dave, and I'm very proud of you. Well, I saw you in the office this morning. I, I thought you were the man who was involved in the accident case. Oh, that's okay, Dave. I think you'd make an excellent private investigator. You know, this is a good picture of you, George. Really? Mm-hmm. Gee, that's my bad side, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I interrupting something? Oh, no, no, not at all. I want you to meet somebody. Uh, this is David Nelson. This is Barbara Bensfield. How do you do? Dave's quite a photographer. We've just been looking at some of his photographs. Oh, isn't that nice? Say, why don't you stay for dinner, Dave? Oh, uh, thank you, but I have a date. Are you sure? We'd love to have you. No, really, thanks just the same. Well, it's nice to have met you, Mr. Gibson. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Miss Bensfield? Thank you. Uh, I can find my way out. Oh, Dave. Uh, yes, ma'am? Uh, yes? Tell me something. How did your brother like that vibrating chair? Oh. <laughs> I'm sure glad things turned out so well for Dave. Yeah. This is one case where the wrong man turned out to be the right man. Where is he? Who, Dave? Yeah. We well, went over to Dorothy. She borrowed some records and he went over and picked them up. At least that was his excuse for going over there. After I tracked him down, the next problem was to maneuver him into a position where I could get a picture of him using his arm. Well, how did you ever find that truck and, and get him to park there just in time? Well, there are some secrets that we investigators would prefer not to reveal. <laughs> David, you're wonderful. No, not really. But you're so handsome, sir. Really? Gee, it's my bad side, too. <laughs> Next week's adventure will be brought to you by our alternate sponsor, the Quaker Oats Company. Now, a word about one of their many fine products, Quaker Oats and Mother's Oats. A hug, a kiss, and a good hot Quaker Oats breakfast. The best school day start you can give your youngster. For just as his soul is nourished by a hug and a kiss, so will his young body be nourished by a good hot breakfast of Quaker Oats. Yes, you'll keep him bright and alert for classwork, happy and healthy through the morning's active play with a nourishing hot breakfast of Quaker Oats with that wonderful oatmeal protein. 
Naturally, youngsters look forward to an occasional change for breakfast. So one morning, try maple syrup, blended right in while the oatmeal cooks. Another time, blend in honey or make it with chocolate. Yes, it's nice having an occasional change for breakfast. Almost as nice as having a mother who starts the school day with a hug and a kiss and a good hot oatmeal breakfast made with Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, the same high-protein oatmeal. I hope you've heard Rick's new album. It's called More Songs by Ricky. Of course, I'm naturally prejudiced, but I think the selections are just great. There's some wonderful snapshots on the inside covers. Aren't those interesting? And then, of course, there's another color picture on the back cover. And here's the big surprise, this beautiful color portrait. Well, see you next week. Good night. Family is brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company. Kodak also presents the Ed Sullivan Show on another network. Remember Kodak's picture idea of the week. Save a whole Saturday with your family in pictures. And this time, try color. Good night. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.